What's up, our maiden? This is myself, Build. And over the next couple of weeks, I've got some mammoth tasks that I need to tackle that I'm not quite sure I'm ready for. I've got loads of twin wall land drain, which I will be installing around the perimeter of the whole building, right at the bottom. Here's my big roll of geotextile. At the end of the next week, there will be 30 ton of pea shingle there. That's all my drainage pipes, soil pipes, all the connection just there. Here's all my inspection chambers. I've got my water and electric cable ducked in. And in a few days time, I'll have a couple of grand's worth of tanking product. That's to deal with this mess here. Got a load of blocks coming, a load of ballast and a load of cement to build a new retaining wall there or a partial one. And this needs to come down slightly so it's safe and it doesn't fall on us. So strap yourself in and get yourself ready for part four where we haven't finished part one, two or three just yet, but we need to start part four, which is the access, the soil pipes, the shitter pipes, everything, do it. This, I'm gonna, that's uh, a soil pipe, that's a soil pipe. This needs to go here. So I'm gonna dig this so we can connect them up later without disturbing it. And then I'll pull this later after we finish parts one, two, and three, probably. So I might see you in a few days. Mm. Back to part four. I still haven't finished three, part three or three and a half, but I need to do a bit of part four now because I want to get rid of this digger because obviously it's on high, it's costing me money every day. So I just need to, I need to use the packer. So I just want to get it done. Uh, that means doing this bit because I need to break out some concrete here and some concrete there. Okay, so inspection chamber here. I'm going straight off as if this is the normal run. I'm going to connect that one into that one and that one into that one. I might need an angle bit on that. I'm just going straight in here. And then off of this bit, I'm going 15 degrees attachment that way. I'm actually going to use this one there because it's got a deeper drop from the bottom up to here. That will give me a little bit more room because I need to obviously make it all the way down to there, which is a lot lower. It's my understanding in general with, uh, with inspection chambers or soil pipes, any change in direction that's over 30 degrees or any connection you need to have an inspection chamber. It's similar for the down pipes as well. My down pipes, I'm going to have one here and then I should be kicking across there and having a rodding point slash inspection chamber. But I'm just going to ignore that. I'm just going to go through here on top of this, kick it round there. I will have another gully here. So that one's going to be roddable. This one will be roddable. I'll go down here. I'm just going to follow this all the way around. I'll go over the top of them, around that corner. I'm going to have another gully here that drops into it. And then I've got to drop it low to come all the way across to here. It's just impossible. I'm going to have manholes, like 500 manholes either. And if I just don't want to do it, I will do the shit out properly. I'm sack the rain pipes off so the surface water slash gutters set there it's going to be i'll it's be halfway there because my gullies will be roddable and obviously i've got my jetting kit what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it over to here and i'm going to connect that side of the roof onto this one as well so i'm going to take this roof here into the same one so i'll have gully down here and i'm going to come across i'm going to put an inspection chamber here because I can get that one in there. That one's for that side of the roof. And then I've got one spare for later when I put in eco drains down here. For this side of the roof, I'm gonna have a gully there and a gully down there. That's gonna be separate solid pipe all the way down to here. And then from here, over to here and then I'm going to drop it into my land drain and then it will take it away as long as it's away from my from the house then I'm happy with that that I've combined them and then I need to get the the soil pipe down here so I've got one there and one there and I'm going to have an inspection chamber down the end one here 
I'm supposed to have another one here, but I need to dig this wider so I can get everything in. So obviously I, I still need to do part 3.5 over here, but the inspection chamber, I'm doing the smaller ones because they're, they're not as deep. Um, if you go above 450 mil or 600, then you need to get the bigger ones. But I need to get my land drain down here still, so this needs to come across. So I'm going to dig this wider all the way, and then I can get everything in at the same in the same pit. And if I think I do a one in 64, and by the time I come down to here, it'll be a similar kind of depth um, and then I need to dig a trench that way but that is the aim so get the soil pipes done crack out this concrete I'll get that done basically you do the main stuff that I need to with the big digger I'll get rid of the main digger I'll keep the little one and the little one I'll do the rest but I'll, I'm gonna get my ramps off my trailer so I can get across the ditches because it's, it's, it's too small to get across this ditches. You have to drive across something. Right, let's crack on. the higher place I said I don't need the digger anymore they're gonna come and pick it up tomorrow um, so I still I, I actually still need it for a little bit longer but I'm just gonna go with it uh, I've peckered this out so that's ready to pull up as and when I need to take it out uh, I've generally had a, a bit of a tidy up put the stone in one place broke up into little bits piled that up as well and I've cleared this bit over here so I got that clear because I was going to do that with a little digger but I just thought well I'll just line it I'll crack that out with a big digger quickly I'm going to do that one then I'm going to do this one over to there I need to do that bit at the top as well um, then I'm going to do this one and then I'll dig a bit of a hole there for that and then I'm going to try and pull this. Issue is, it's 20 past five. I've got about 20 minutes until the sun sets. So I'm going to do as much as I can. I've got lights on now. I don't know whether I'm going to push it that much, but it shouldn't take that long, should it? Um, I'll show you the progress tomorrow. Do you reckon I'll get it done? Afternoon. Just waiting for the digger to get picked up. I'm, I'm a little bit tired, but I'm not. I will be in a couple of hours. So before it got dark, I managed to do this one. So I pulled that out, so that went all well. And then it was pitch black. So I then done this one. had a little bit of an issue because I didn't actually I didn't clear the edges of the trench 
so when I come to spin it off, which was a very squeaky bum moment, because I couldn't really see, um, I knocked a load of soil in, so that means tidying up. I thought that this would happen, that they wouldn't come and get it until the afternoon, so I had a little bit of time in the morning. So I've done this one. So the way that I do it, I'll put it on screen now. I just go one way and then I turn around and then I go the other way and I try and get it so I can get all of it and then I have to spin it off the ditch and to, it just cut off <laughs> recording before I actually spun it off the ditch and oh my god I it, it nearly went down I can't believe that you didn't see it but my heart went my adrenaline was going I was like, oh my bloody god because the the back track on the corner just I just didn't do it properly because I, I don't know what I'm doing really I'm I'm just I learn how to drive diggers off YouTube <laughs> so, um, I made a bit of a mess on this one down here that was I done that last night as well and then I just thought right, I'm just gonna give it up um, and then I I stopped and I thought right let's just carry on so I pulled that one there and then I stopped again and then I thought right okay I need to get my gully in over there and that overspill was there so I peckered that out as well so at the manhole so that's for one chitter that's gonna be for the other so we're pretty much lined up and then I'm gonna do one there and then it kicks that way. Stuff that I knocked in last night by accident and any little bits that I didn't manage to get, I'm gonna do by hand now. So that's gonna be me for the next few hours. So I wanna make sure that that's clear because if it rains, then it's gonna be that much harder to get out. But I need my digger boy now. Where are you, Dan? Because <laughs> if I start, I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do this and because I've got an issue with uh, like a bulging disc in my back that's going to play it up and then I'll, I'll I'll be in all kinds of trouble tonight or tomorrow but I ain't really got a choice once I've laid them in I'm going to ring the building inspector and say look do you want to have a look at them or not basically I think they do need inspecting but I can just imagine him just going no, just send me a couple of pictures but yeah see you tomorrow They finally picked up the digger a day late and uh, so yesterday well I've had a little bit of a late start today um, I just I've, I've <laughs> I really want to come home <laughs> I just don't want to do it anymore um, I've, I've been thinking it's just that kind of weather where it's kind of almost nice during the day and it's a little bit nippy at night I just want to snuggle up on the sofa with a log burner um, yeah, I've already planned when I get home, I said to Lou, right, we'll, we go out for a meal. I said, I'm not one for doing that. And she said, well, we just get, we just order in and stay indoors. And I was like, no, no, we'll go out, we'll go out. Right. Uh, so I've cleared everything. Now the gradient, um, I've kind of just eyeballed it. Um, I tend to be quite good with visual stuff. Um, so it's just it's it's there or thereabouts i know it's definitely sloping and then we can work out obviously what needs to happen um around here what i thought was i'll bring the the drainage for the gutters down here and then i'll kick it through this bit so i had to take out this bank here there was a big chunk so i was using the pickaxe yesterday and here there's flint and flint and more flint so a chunk flew off smashed me in the face I was like nice that that feels like it should be bleeding and then I went and had a look in the mirror and there was like a, a almost like a rice grain size bit of flint just stuck in my face there so I pulled it out and made, made like a nice little hole didn't bleed too much but always make sure you've got your safety glasses on and your first aid kit right I need to sort this side out. So I need to work out exactly where this 
land drain is going to finish in comparison to the actual soil pipe so this inspection chamber it's a mini one uh, 320 wide that top section now I can take off about 60 mil so I might need to take about 40 mil off but I'm going to drop it in as is and we're going to run it down now the issue is obviously for here I want any excess water to go through the land drain so if you can imagine obviously if, if I've done a land drain that's there and then I've got all of my gravel if I then try and put in a soil pipe which is lower any water that comes down it's going to end up here and it's not going to go through the actual land drain here and then it will collect around here and it won't go anywhere until it fills up to there now I don't want to collect water around this general area I want it to be as far away from the property as possible so my land drain can be anywhere between 1 in 200 to 1 in 100 that means for every say 200 mil it drops 1 mil or every 100 mil it drops 1 mil at the moment my pipe over there is 120 millimeters below the foundation okay and I know from that corner down to that corner is 15 and a half meters so I go 1500 no 15,500 I divide that by 100 gives me 155 mil plus the 120 mil that is already below gives me 275 millimeters below and then that one down there is already 270 millimeters below so it'll match up to the one that i've already put in so you can see this one here is basically on top of the foundation so that's starting at zero whereas that one there is already 120 below so i need to make sure that this doesn't go any lower than that one all the way down so my land drain there's my foundation this bit here is 120 mil that's where my land drain starts and then by the time it gets all the way over to here it goes downhill ever so slightly and then this gap here is roughly 270 ish now if I want to get my soil pipe in then the way that we work that out is soil pipes can be anything up to 1 in 44 or 1 in 84. So I know between my soil pipe down there and down to the end, because it's not quite at the end, it's over 15 metres. So if I get 1500 and I divide that by, let's go halfway in between this, 60, that means that by the time it starts at zero there and ends so it's going to start here effectively and then it's going to come all the way down here the bottom of the pipe this number equals 250 below so it starts up here and it ends roughly in the same place so at no point down the side of the building is there going to be anything lower than the land drain. So with them two pipes roughly finishing the same height, I will then need to drop the soil pipe underneath where it connects here roughly. And then um, I've taken this down hopefully far enough so I can still get my fall basically. So that, that will work out fine. I know that that needs probably taken down a little bit for my land drain. But, so yeah, it'll probably, I need to dig this out by hand. So I reckon that'll work out. So I'm just gonna spend a bit of time just clearing this, getting all that out of the way, and then uh, I can drop everything in, start backfilling for my land drain, and then I'll be ready to connect up my soil pipes. Bonus points to anyone that spotted my error. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> right. So I calculated it from this pipe here this is the bottom of the chamber whereas this pipe here which is the main run is actually 50 mil lower so i can't count from zero so i'm going to end up doing a one in 74 so working out from there 
it's basically 220 mil lower at that end than it is this end. Plus the 50 mil gives me a 270, so it'll finish fine. Basically, I'm not digging lower than the land drain, so there you go. <laughs> Probably a bit dark, but I'm pretty much dialed in. And this is my temporary setup. So I need to put the land drain in first, but I'll talk you through why I've done this. I'm not sure many ground workers or contractors go into this much granular detail, but I'm sure they just wang it in and do whatever. And if it's got a fall, then it hopefully it'll work. But I don't quite work like that. Now, lucky enough, because I got rid of my main contractor, I then was able to set these pipes coming out of the wall here. So I done them at 60 degrees and I used my Bosch angle measurer. This is not the pro version, this is like the DIY style, but it's close enough in terms of the angle. So I set it at 60 degrees to come out. So off of this wall to come this way. And the reason why I done that is because these bends you get slightly different ones so you get a 15 degrees you get a 30 degrees and you get a 45 degrees now with these inspection chambers you basically obviously you get the one that goes straight through this next one is set at 45 degrees and then the other one if you get a, f a five they come out at 90 degrees so with that if i set that at 60 degrees i knew that i could put a 15 on on the next and then that would then set it up to go 45 on this straight into the actual inspection chamber and then i could run this parallel to the building ready for the next inspection chamber voila if i just show you quickly what i'm doing with this um i don't know whether it's useful for anyone but i'm, I'm telling you anyway is this video too long let me know um, right I'm sorting this out now this has been propped up on some uh, concrete blocks just roughly so it's almost where I need it so now I need to put a pea shingle underneath it and then I can level this up so our pea gravels all around and then we want to get a level on top and we want to level this off um, because inside the actual pipe is a natural fall anyway at the bottom so what you do is jiggle this, lift it up, and the gravel will fall underneath, and then you can get this level. Both ways, obviously. This is a little bit more awkward for me because I've got my land drain underneath and I'm trying to keep all the gravel and the fabric in place. Right now, we've done this. So we need to make sure that this has still got the fall on it. Now this level is 400 millimetres, so I can already see that there's a fall in it and to make sure it's a correct fall. Minimum is 1 in 80 and maximum is 1 in 40, so basically you get 400. Divide that by 80 will give you a 5 mil and uh, 40 is uh, 10 mil. So between this end of the level and this end of the level needs to be between five and 10 mil. So I've got my trusty packers, my glazing packers. You always need these. I'm gonna put six mil under this end. And if that bubble is level, then we know that we've got a good fall. So that's probably about a one in 74, which is what I was aiming for all the way down anyway. 
this is going in part three and a half and four so sorry if you say it twice but obviously i'm doing both at the same time we've decided to cover them up the pipes were quite easy to like just move if you walk up and down and then they just go out of full it's just, and it wasn't good i got very stressed i was going to leave it exposed for a building inspector to check but i'd right i'll take pictures of this side i'll leave the other side open this would be a piece of piss if you was doing one on its own in its own trench easy two next to each other nightmare so i had to use that adjustable angle just because this is ended up lower um obviously that's a bigger fall but it's only a short run anyway so i reckon it'll be fine for everything to go down uh that's already that's too high so i need to cut that and then we went and had a cup of tea because it was raining and Dan said, what about your gutter pipes? And I was like, oh, fuck. I forgot that I needed to put this in as well. So it's lucky he said before we backfilled it. So I've put this on. It just goes above the soil pipe. Obviously, I've not set that side yet. But that's good. So I just need to figure out what's happening down here now. I did say to Dan, you fancy like stopping what you're doing? He's using a digger to fill up the barrows and he comes all the way around here dumps it over there you don't want to dig all day so i have to dig the hole that soil pipe's not set in yet i've only just laid it in roughly so it's going to come down to here and then i need to get it across there so i've got a fiver on this i say fiver as in one two three four five uh i'm going to go in this one here and then it's going to carry out this one here but i need to get it in here so i need to dig that up once i've got it roughly in position i need to figure out how i'm going to duck it under the um land drain and then probably dig this out and look at this bitch right here is an old wooden post like a telegraph pole so i have to dig that out right let's do an update it's the 5th of november friday the 5th of november <laughs> i've been here for four weeks straight now um been doing this whole mammoth task project for three and a half the past week i've been down to half days because i'm just i don't want to do it anymore i'm i'm tired i'm achy it's it's soul destroying just doing the same thing for so long but i've made a little bit of progress so i'm just going to talk you through what i've done so far what i've learned and then uh, i'm going to wrap up part four still a little bit of part three left which i'll do this weekend and then i'll close that one off N neither of them are going to be totally finished though okay for the soil pipe down here i had to kick it out this way so i could get a kick underneath where the land drain's going to go i've used an adjustable again uh, with a 15 degrees and then down there i've used three meter pipe the reason why i use three meter pipe over there is because all my six meter stuff is bent i tried to actually bend it back uh, unsuccessfully i'll chuck in a picture of how i tried to do that but it just hasn't worked so buying six meter lengths it's a false economy they're not that much cheaper and you end up if you don't store them perfectly flat they just bend uh, even the three meter one bends as well so if you're ever doing this in the future make sure that you lay your flat pipes proper flat probably across pallets or something especially if you're going to leave i bought all this material in bulk before so prices didn't go up and i could get a little bit of a discount but yeah it's turned out to be a bit more of an issue than i thought it would be well i didn't realize it'd be an issue so that run down here and originally i was planning on going into this one here but at the fall it was on the edge so i had to drop it into this one instead because that's the bottom one so lucky enough that fit quite nice now I dug that trench quite well considering I've done it in the dark 
everything the fall was pretty much there i just didn't want to risk it because it was on the cusp so i thought i'd better drop it because that bottom one is 50 mil lower and i was able to check that using my laser level but i needed to use it in the dark this picture here so i worked out that i could have pretty much it's about a one in 50 ish fall one in 60 maybe Whereas on, on the other one, it would have been like close to the 180, if not over. So this is up top near the front door or entrance door. Um, so I ended up spraying the tops. I just put little things because I knew, then I knew which way it was bending because I used some of the big pipes and just cut them up. That kicks down slightly and goes in. That one was a little bit awkward. I used one of them adjustables again into here and then it goes down there drops down so this is a 30 degree angle i think they class 45 and above as an actual vertical fall i can't see like stuff getting trapped down there so i reckon that's all right and then i've scooted it all the way down again i've used a six meter straightest bit that i had for there I made a bit of a balls up on this one when you're laying your pipe or digging your trenches you kind of like want this kind of gap underneath like an inch or two and then that it feels nice with the gravel and this is what you don't want so i dug this during the day obviously i was just guessing i didn't have a level or anything but that's a massive gap now you want a solid bed under these pipes otherwise they end up bowing and then obviously you get trapped stuff um, I've only got a certain amount of pea shingle left. I probably need a little bit more from the French drain, but I don't want to use all of it, just backfilling that. So the plan is I'm going to backfill it with soil to a certain level. Then I'm going to put the pea shingle in so it will bed properly. Um, I'll get my building inspector to check it at some point, but because this is a self build, and I can do everything in my own time. I'm just going to leave these trenches open for maybe like the next month or so. And then that way the rain will compress any um, backfill soil that I put in or clay. So if it is going to drop underneath, I'll ha have the opportunity to put a little bit more pea shingle in if I need to. So that's the action plan. I had to use two adjustables down here. Now it was really close, but I just couldn't get it. So I needed to use them. Obviously these cost money. So I would say if you're doing an inspection chamber with more than three connections, just get one and ones with the adjustable, like little bits that come out here. I'll drop a picture in now. So that's probably more economically sensible to do it that way. Um, rather than getting them adjustables because they're all expensive. I'll probably need more for the actual uh, surface water drainage or storm water drainage. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to film that now. I'll, I'll do that another day. Maybe we'll end up having a part six or something. But yeah. Um, fittings that I've used, uh, mostly the 15 degrees, a couple of 30 degrees no 45s so there's no point in using 45s on this so if you're doing your soil or foul water drainage 15s 30s and adjustable three meter lengths and an adjustable inspection chamber if you have more than three you pretty much that oh one more the shit for the cart lodge so soil pipe out there i would have done that soil pipe lower had the foundation not been in there so had my grand worker actually known what he was doing he would have put this stuff in before he'd done the actual foundations but he's a moron i've kicked it down there and i've done a sweep in 45 and then that goes into there hopefully that's going to work okay but it's not that far to jet it or rod it from that point and i can always put a rodding point in here as well so I'm just going to backfill the soil pipes uh, now over the next few hours, even though I really don't want to. Um, 
I'm going to leave them exposed at the top so my building inspector can check it once I've got this uh, stormwater or surface water drainage in as well. And then um, what you're supposed to do is you backfill it totally and then you need to get um, a, another test to see if it's leaking. So I'll have to book that in like when, when I've, well, some point in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I reckon I'm going to test it myself. So I'll see if I can get the bungs to put in the pipes in the inspection chambers and then um, I'll fill it with water and see, see what happens, see if I've got any leaks. I'll do that before I backfill and afterwards, check it's okay. Then I'll book in the official inspection. So it's just, yeah, another waste of money, even though I know it's gonna be all right at that point anyway. But. So if you are doing a self build, I would say it's well worth getting yourself a digger. Just buy one, because hiring these is <laughs> it's quite expensive. I was looking at buying one before and I, I just decided against it in the end. Um, but I've had this one for four weeks, the other one I had for two weeks. I say by the end of it, we're, we're almost coming up to four grand's worth of hire equipment. Um, and I could have bought one for like eight to 10 grand and then probably sold it for the same money at the end of it. So that's the only thing I don't have to worry about is maintenance. But I mean, I probably like doing that kind of stuff anyway, because I like fixing stuff. I think I might buy one next year, maybe. Um, I'm going to sell some in my motorbikes, I think. Because it'll be that, I mean, I've got a, a classic aerial with a sidecar and uh, I'm never going to use it, am I? I'll, go, I'll use the digger more, so it's probably best to put the money into a digger instead. I think I, I quite like a, a Kubota U17. Basically saying less, is it, that's 1.7 tonnes. I don't want something like this, two and a half tonnes. Um, and that's zero tail swing, expanding tracks. I reckon that that do me, um, but we'll, we'll see. Or if anyone's <laughs> anyone's a millionaire and they fancy treating me, yeah. I think the only other thing um, probably I should mention is um, cutting your pipes with a handsaw yeah it's okay but it's probably better to actually do it with an angle grinder like i've done it before in um in this video anyway if you haven't already please do subscribe smash the like button thanks for watching i'll see you later